So I'm going to go over pretend. I mean, there's one trade that was completely invalid for me. Um, obviously, I didn't take any of these because it is a Monday and I'm not on the charts looking for opportunities. Um, there was perfect sell and then there was a potential buy. Um, but I'm not going to go too much into it just because it is kind of a liquidity inducement entry. So I'll give the basics and the rundown, but you know the, the experience behind it, I'm not going to be sharing. Um, so obviously Euro USD, my pair, the only pair, pair, pair I usually trade. So um, if we have a look at the timing, yeah. we can see the. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Mute that fella. Fuck that shit. Um, so here, seven o'clock, eight o'clock is around the perfect time to be trading, right? So this is our London kill zone. Um, so what I would be looking for is obviously on the one hour we can see that price was coming up with volume, right? And in the last one hour candle was a bearish candle. And then coming into seven o'clock just before London, we're still seeing a continuation of that bearish momentum. So overall, my thought here is for price to continue up, we're gonna need to see a liquidity sweep, right? So the first point of liquidity here straight off the bat, remaining on the one hour, is gonna be this, this low here, because on a lower time frame, this point in price essentially is gonna look something like that. Right, so that is our first point of liquidity on the one hour. So if we now build a bigger picture, we understand that we need to see the liquidity sweep and then obviously the trend at the minute is to see price continue up taking the liquidity from previous high up here. So with that image, we know that during London Open, we're gonna be looking for sales in the market until we come to a POI that we could potentially be in see we could potentially see buyers from sorry so the first point of interest underneath this liquidity is going to be this order block so the reason why i'm saying it and speaking through it like this is because this is the step by step i'm doing what i'm doing is i'm looking for the liquidity and then our targets are going to be the point of interest underneath or above the liquidity because essentially we're trading the narrative we're trading what market has to happen and what has to do sorry so now we've got the high time frame POI, we've got the high time frame liquidity. What we can do now is jump down and have a bit more of a refined approach and look on the market. I'm going to be jumping down just one more to the five minute. We don't need to be using every single one. Um, so if we can see here, right, this is our first point of liquidity. So we managed to take that before getting an entry. There is an entry here, but I want to go over to the you know the larger entry. We can cover that in a minute. Um, so essentially, we've taken the liquidity here. However, there's no valid POI here. Everything here, everything here, has been mitigated. So price shouldn't hold this level and create a new high. So when things are mitigated, it doesn't hold the volume and the strength that it should for it to respect that level which then gives it the strength to come up and create that new high. So what we call that is a manipulation zone. So you might see smart money trap or just a trap in general. That is because people are gonna be buying in this position, which is what we're trading. So we wanna be catching the positions that the, you know, the silly dumb side of SMC are catching. So these people are buying here. So we know that this is a trap because there's nothing valid here for price to be respecting. So we understand that this is going to be a great place of liquidity because this is where everyone's stop losses are going to be. So moving on from that, we understand that price still needs to continue down to the high time frame POI. So if we have a look, we can draw out the POI. So this is a POI that we can see a retracement to. Um, let's drag that across. I'm going to remove this just for a minute. And then we can jump down to the one minute and we can see We've got liquidity, we've got the five minute POI. I don't like refining POIs. I usually just stick to the higher time frame POI and then just react on the lower time frame instead of refining and potentially refining too much and you know potentially missing trades. That's not what I'm looking for. So we can see here on the lower time frame, we come up, we tap into the order block. 
So here, during the first tap of the order block, we can see price comes down, breaks structure, and pulls back up. However, we've got no liquidity inside of this leg, so it induces, it induces the previous high, and that there is the true initiation point. So now, again, we've come down, we've created a new low, breaking previous low, and then we've left some liquidity behind, so we now have the liquidity, we've got the POI, so that there is a perfect point for you to be selling from with stops just above, and then our targets will have been that one hour order block. So if we actually now move over to the potential buy, as we can see, where the exact point of the POI was on the one hour, we've got structure here obviously but all of this is all mitigated choppy so nothing here is valid so essentially yeah our take profit was here and it was nice but this hasn't got the appropriate volume and structure for it to be the exact point where price then turns around and creates that new high does everyone understand that what i'm trying to say does everyone understand yeah. what's that yeah yeah Okay, yeah, cool. Remember. So, but uh, I have a question. Go on. Do you know where the price? Do you wait for retracement or do you end of break of candle where once it swept that uh, inducement? So I would be more <laughs> aggressive. So I would wait for price to just take the liquidity on the inducement, and then as soon as we start seeing it retrace, I would have been entering there. But as you can see, there was a yeah. More... But you enter of the break of candle, yeah. Uh, not necessarily break a candle. Oh. It's just I want to see. You know the the next candle. You know start retracing. Like, I want to see oh, so them wait for the slow down. So we've got big candles here, big candles here. This one is you know hasn't got much volume in it, and then straight away it comes straight down. So yeah, to be more safer, there's no problem with waiting for that candle to close and then entering okay, and then entering here. Um, okay, okay. So that is one way you can do it. Um, but back to this trade. Let me finish this, and I'll answer any more questions. Um, as you can see here nothing's really that nice so let's i haven't actually looked at this yet so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just slowly scale up on the time frames and look at potentially where we could have seen the reversal from so we do have an imbalance here so there's a nice imbalance here right let's mark that out as our imbalance and then we can now just get rid of this because we don't need it anymore anymore so now seeing that point of interest, obviously we're not going to be taking buyers off of like setting a buy limit because it's an imbalance. I don't really trust imbalances, but what we can do is wait for valid reactions. So as you can see, we hit take profit nice and quickly. Obviously we start accumulating a bit because there are going to be buyers in the market trying to buy at the exact point of the one hour candle. However, price needs to accumulate, you know, take liquidity before it continues up. But we don't really need to get into that too much. All we need to be looking at is the fact that we've come down with volume and then price starts to slow down. When price slows down, it means it's trying to turn around. It's just it needs to take that liquidity. So what I would have done personally, without going too much in it, because like I said, it is the liquidity inducement stuff. As you can see, price comes down here and takes all of the liquidity. So this here is a nice, nice inducement, nice liquidity sweep. We've seen price come up, try to break previous high, but failed. And then we can see that when we have a nice small gap in between the POIs, or the inducement and the POI, this gives me confidence that we're gonna see price come down one more time, especially when we have no liquidity, especially when we've got no liquidity in this leg for it to come down take and then go up what we could definitely be looking for is another inducement of that low taking the liquidity and tapping into the poy at once so here this would have been an aggressive entry for me because i understand that price is slowing down just misses the poy reacts away leaves no liquidity behind perfect perfect textbook style trade for an inducement to occur and as it induces, it tapped into the POI, and then I would have been entering, even if you wanted to wait a little bit longer so it pulls away from it, 
retraces slightly, comes up with volume, closes, and then you enter. That there is still going to be a nice entry, considering there's quite a lot of space above. So if we jump back on the five minute, wherever we are, what we're going to be doing is looking for the first POI after the liquidity. So let's jump down to the three minute. We can see that we have our first point of liquidity is here. So still we're trading facts, we're trading liquidity. We can now see a POI above the liquidity, which is going to be this order block here. We can drag that across and then that there would be our targets. So all we're essentially doing is trading and targeting liquidity. So it's liquidity and POIs. Obviously you can be catching the big external moves if you want to, but for me, I find it a lot easier and a lot more, well the success rate is a lot higher because we're simply trading what moves the market. So we understand that if price wanted to turn around here, it has to, oh my fucking mouse is disconnected. Um, it has to take some liquidity to gain the strength to do that move to the downside. Does that does that under, does that help everyone understand? AMD model, uh, yeah, technically that's what liquidity inducement is. Really, the basics is A and B cycle. So if anyone's got any questions, uh, send in the messages on the chat, um, and then I can just respond. yeah, I have one. Go on, because uh, you know on the sell. Or like when is a valid change of character because you know on the lower time frames there are a lot of fake outs so like when for you is a valid change of character on the lower time frame so Cause... valid change of character for me is changing character on a lower or a higher that has liquidity so if price didn't have any liquidity here then that for me would have been a liquidity sweep but because there is liquidity and there is a POI this is enough for it to buy up but because it didn't want to buy up that then gives you the confidence that it's trying to just change direction so because it's got liquidity it's got a valid POI and it goes straight through it and creates a new low that there shouldn't technically be yeah obviously you might one in one or two trades in ten trades it might just continue back up but realistically this should not buy up if it's broken a valid POI and taken liquidity because it doesn't need any more liquidity it doesn't need anything else so that's a good way to understand whether it's a broken structure or not here we've got liquidity it holds the POI if it comes up again for another inducement I may not have as much confidence in the position just because we had the liquidity and we had a POI so technically why should it be doing it do you know what I'm saying Luke can you use intraday session quarterly theory like for 90 minute cycles um I don't um I know a good friend of mine does um but you can use the timing so it's kill zones essentially um so yeah i'll use you know q2 is 8 a.m to 9 30 and then q3 and 4 different timings but i don't teach it because i don't you know i'm not confident in that i'm like what i'm teaching now is what i know so i don't i don't i don't think of it i don't really go into it um they're just kill zones they're just it's just timing really there's nothing really about it other than timing um so yeah those trades were taken in London kill zone correct uh, yeah just price and time exactly kill zones and time is the most important thing and that's why I say to people make sure you just study one session there's no point trading like in between sessions um so Luke, what are your thoughts on gold? Have you checked that? Huh, I don't trade gold, but I can look at it for sure. What you yeah, What are you asking for? What do you want me to look at? No, I was just wondering if you check gold, like because I I seen that it has less inducement than Euro USD, but I don't know if that's good for your strategy because your strategy is based off inducement. Um, it's not that my strategy is based off inducement. Like if I'm potentially looking at GU, I will trade it slightly different because I understand the behavior. It's not just a solid strategy. Like there's, there's always ways to adapt type thing. So with GU, it doesn't it doesn't need as much inducement. So you don't need to be looking for extra, you know, liquidity sweeps and this and that. Whereas EU, I know wants more liquidity sweeps. So it's just about adjusting and understanding the behavior of the pair you're looking at. So essentially the strategy I'm teaching you 
that is how to trade. You could, you, you know, all of the main pairs like GU, EU, I like AU, so any USD pairs really, you know, it's going to work on everything because you're understanding what what moves the market. You're targeting your liquidity. You're targeting targeting your POI. So it's, it's all adaptable. Do you know what I mean? It's just I personally just yeah. choose to just trade EU and potentially sometimes GU. But that's just personal preference. You know what I teach. You could you know adapt it to whatever you want. Um, yeah, I see. But yeah, um, yeah, gold. Yeah. I don't even look at because it it's just too volatile. Oh, okay. But GU is nice sometimes. Um, I think in my previous YouTube video. Was there any video, valid trade on GU today? Huh? You, was there any valid trade for you on GU? Uh, I didn't today? look on GU, but if we have a look here, yeah. there's a buy here. So, as you can see here, price come up with volume, slowing down. We've got our liquidity, we've got our POI, and then we can look here on the one minute and potentially see if there was any nice entry um so yeah that would have been my injury really so we can see price let me just clear my charts price is coming down not with much volume takes the liquidity we've got a nice inducement as well i'm going to give you one thing the inducement has to have volume inducement isn't slow so when this is quick that shows me that this is the inducement and it's about to turn around and it's ready so simply here would have been my injury i would have literally Actually, I'm going to put that back there and then just remove this. Fuck. My entry would have been literally here or on the order block here. Oh, okay, I see. And then targets, previous highs, aware of you looking to target. Um, so it's pretty simple once you start studying like even if you don't join the mentorship if you can just study what i'm trying to explain you're going to start seeing the chart straight away like straight away you can see i just noticed straight away gu would come up with volume liquidity order block like that that on the 15 minute is clear as day like anyone who has any understanding should know liquidity order block like that there is the most textbook trade and the no, I reckon if you stuck to trades like this, obviously they're not always as beautiful as this, but let's say you get two trades a month that look exactly the same as this, I guarantee your win rate will be 90%. Because what, as well, when you start looking at it in this approach, obviously everything is off of probability essentially, but when you're trading you know, the facts and you've studied what moves the market, you kind of stop looking at it as probability because you're not you know you haven't got four different order blocks and you're waiting to see which one holds you're literally following what has to happen so if you study it and you understand that this example happens 80 percent of the time you know with full confidence it's a valid order block it's taking liquidity we're continuing to the upside you know it's not off of probability it's just it's a no-brainer you're going to be entering it Has anyone got any more questions before I stop the video? Oh yeah, I, I do, about the mentorship. And you know, uh, if I buy it, is there gonna be like, uh, like videos of you back testing? Um, I don't do back testing or... because I think yeah, I know, back like, testing is the, the biggest scam. So, um, oh, okay, so, so in the mentorship you've got obviously like i posted the other day you've got 40 videos on topics and there might be three or four videos on one topic so how i laid out the new course is you can there's different topics so in the video uh mentorship video sorry you've got the original course which was the one that was the only one like six months ago four months ago yeah probably three four months ago and now i've got a channel for entry concepts high time frame price action lower time frame price action internal and external structure, finding your bias, trading times, everything, liquidity, inducement, entry stage, finding your POI. So I've made it like this. So when you're struggling or when you feel like your weakness is whatever topic, instead of going through the course and rewatching it, you know that if you're struggling with you know, volume, it may be because you're trading the wrong time. So then you click on the trading times and then you can watch that video. It's um, you know lower time frame price action. 
then you can just watch those and you can just pick and choose what topics you want to focus on and obviously if you need extra help you can request another video and i'll just simply post another video inside of that that text for everyone um and then obviously the case studies whenever there's a valid trade so for instance when i post the trades in the free section and i say this is the markup this is the valid entry i didn't take it however if you study it you know you're going to be able to see positions like this more often because you understand how yeah. to trade i'll, rec I, I saw I'll record friday, it and post it yeah i saw on friday uh you did a live live trading do you do it often or is it i do it once a week like oh, okay. i did it three times a week a couple of weeks ago but then especially through q1 and stuff going on every single morning and i'll straight away when i load up on the morning within five minutes i'll know whether or not there's gonna be an opportunity for me so when i'm doing these calls and i know instantly that you know i'm not confident i know for a fact i'm not going to be entering so we're going to be on this call for an hour and a half me knowing i'm not going to be entering but i feel like i'm i'm having to constantly just not over trade but like i'm constantly having to constantly having to look at the charts when i know that nothing is going to happen do you know what i mean so I've yeah, yeah. changed it so I can do it once a week just because obviously it's going to be nice for people to see me trading live and if I do take a trade then we're all going to be winning whatever um, but then on the mornings while I am taking a trade I'll just record it and document it during the position do you know what I mean that's what I'm going to be start starting to do uh -huh. I also have a question you know the course and the mentorship is it like from for beginners or is it like an advanced section yeah, so it's a, obviously it's all advanced because it's advanced concepts, but I teach oh, yeah. you in a dummy way type thing. Do you know what I mean? It's easy for you to understand, and that's one thing that everyone said. I teach it in a very yeah, but simple way. I mean, like, way. are there, like, are the basic session, what is liquidity and all of that, or is it, like, advanced where, like, not the basics, like, not what is market structure, like, if you, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so on the liquidity, there's three separate mm. videos. So... The first video for liquidity is understanding the basics of liquidity. Video 11, which is the second one, slightly more detailed, de slightly more detailed regarding liquidity. And then the third video is getting more difficult within liquidity. All right. And obviously, if you do struggle, like if, I, if you feel like I'm not covering something, the one that's what the one to ones are there for. Yeah. I may yeah, even drop a discount a... after this webinar as well. Yeah, I'm buying a course in like two weeks, but yeah, fucking job. Can we get a simple trading plan? Not for free. I do have a full trading plan in the mentorship. There is. Oh yeah. Also, do you help like get people like when they buy your mentorship on one on ones to build a trading plan for the person? Yeah. Well, I've provided a whole trading plan, so everything there is what I do. So you uh, can okay. use that. You can refine it to slightly what suits you more. But everything's there. But obviously, yeah, if you needed extra help, that's that's there. All right. I'm gonna um, pause the video now. Uh, what about trading Fridays? Yeah, Fridays are fine. 